We've seen the faces of this awful tragedy, but there is one voice which took us all to that terrible scene on Sunday night. He was calm despite the chaos, but we all sensed the urgency in his voice. 124, major incident declared. We have a bus rollover, multiple patients. We have multiple red and orange label patients at this stage. I need all resources allocated to continue. I'm still trying to work out exactly how many patients I have here. That was Joel D'Azuna, a New South Wales Ambulance Inspector, and he joins me now. Joel, it was a lot to see and coordinate. How do you feel listening back to that? It's still very surreal. Um, I'm still processing it. When you're there, you just don't realise what you are actually doing. That's, uh, it's a cliche what we're trained to do, and our training does kick in, but, yeah, just a bit of a blur. We all think you sound to calm. Thank you. Were you? Uh, I'll use the analogy of the duck. Everything's calm on, on the surface, but my, my little feet were running everywhere and uh, that's exactly what my, my thought process was as well. I know what needs to be done, thinking five to ten steps ahead, but there's still a lot going through your head at the time. I mean, I think there was also an urgency in your voice and you finished the message with, I'm still trying to work out exactly how many patients I have here and to me, that paints a picture of absolute chaos. It does. So with that one, you would have heard in there as well, we've got the different label of patients that we have um, throughout. They weren't all together. They were mm. separated, you know, patients over here, patients over there. And then as the, the ambulance commander there, I have to go walking and moving around and, and eyeballing a lot of things for myself as well to get that clarity and that picture. How are you? Because something like this must surely take its toll. I'm not myself. And I'll be honest, and, 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 and it's, I think it's safe to say that we're not going to be 100%. I'm not my normal bounty energizer self. No, I think it's still going to take a number of days to even bounce back to a semi part of who I am. Mm. Do you ever think about your own family in moments like that? Not at the time, but when you actually have the stop, like at the end of that job, you know, where the last patient's gone and you take that deep breath and then Things like that, yeah, they, they start to think and go, I'm going to go home to them later on and how are they going to receive what I've just done? Do I, do I tell my family? Don't I tell my family? Well, a situation like that too, you live kind of close. You've probably been on one of those wedding buses before. That, yeah, my wife and I did the exact same thing for our wedding, you know. Um, Twelve years ago, you, you've, you get those people there and you just want them to have a good time. You don't expect a night like mm. that to, to end up the way it did. Sharing over the radio the enormity of what's in front of you, this was a big disaster. So many lives were reliant on you making the right calls. Yep. Did you feel that pressure? I'm the one wearing the orange vest. The orange vest is the commander's vest and as more crews come in, that's who they're looking to straight away. There is a, there's so much on the shoulders for an ambulance commander at those type of jobs. Was this the toughest job you've ever had to attend? This is my 18th year in the job. I've done some horrible jobs you never want to hear about, but I've got to say that is the, the worst job mm. I've ever been to. Um, I really hope that myself and my colleagues never have to do something like that again. Well, look, I know that there is a lot of support around you, including your very gorgeous family, but your clear collected radio call that night, I think, helped save many lives. And I'm sure that those families find some reassurance in that. So thank you. Thank you.